This spins around, yet it provides precise linear motion. Today we explore the cam mechanism, and I'll show you how versatile they are and how you can use them to make your designs better. This video exists due to popular demand and will form part of an ongoing series on designing with simple mechanisms. It follows on from my previous video about over-center mechanisms, where viewers asked for more of this format. If instead you want to drool over beautiful complex mechanisms, I'd highly recommend Maker's Muse, who has both quantity and quality in that area. In this video, we're going to keep things simple by examining the cam, identifying key characteristics, and then using it in a series of real-world design examples. So what exactly is a cam? Well, most people have probably heard of a camshaft, so we'll start with that. This is the cylinder head for an internal combustion engine. We have ports on one side where we need the air and fuel to get in. And if we flip it around, we can see we also have ports where we need the exhaust gases to escape. Handling this precise control are these valves, which need to open and shut at the right time to allow the process to take place. On the other side of the valves, we have these blocks that we can push on. And if we look at this from the cylinder side, we can see that when we push against the spring, the valve will open, in this case, to let the exhaust gas out. This animation on Wikipedia illustrates the job of the cam perfectly. It rotates around and then the longer section, called a lobe, will push down to open the valve. In an engine, a camshaft has a series of cams to open and close a whole row of valves at the right time. And a key concept here is that rotational movement is turned into linear movement. But this is not the only place you'll find cams. Another common place might be in a window latch mechanism, or as we see here, a quick release tripod mount. Here, as the cam rotates, the lobe will either lock or move to provide clearance for the removable section. We can also find cams inside control knobs, which snap to specific positions to control specific functions. It's not hard to find this type of interface on a 3D printer, which speaks to the versatility of cams. But what makes a cam a cam? Well, here is the simplest version that I could create. We have a circle that makes up our base radius, and then we have a section of the cam called the lobe that from the center point of the cam has a larger radius. And we can demonstrate this by drawing a circle that highlights the difference between the two. The difference in inner and outer radius in a car camshaft would be called the lift, and in this example is 6mm. If we extrude the sketch and print it, we have a basic cam, but the thing about a cam is it's quite useless by itself. To make it useful, I've sketched a handle, a frame, and a round surface to be actuated by the cam. And when we print this out, it gives us our simplest example, where we're going to turn rotation into linear movement. You can see as we turn the cam, the lobe will push on the bottom of the bolt and lift it up vertically, and then gravity will bring it back down. Of course, this example only works when it's facing upwards. If we turn it sideways or downwards, the mechanism breaks down. But the addition of a simple compression spring means our cam mechanism will work as it did when it's facing upward, but it will also now work facing any orientation. The spring now returns the bolt to the idle position, taking over the role of gravity. Rotation to linear motion is very handy, but cams can do a lot more than that. Let's return then to using a cam as a locking mechanism. Let's start with a simple frame and then a door, which is hinged from the two rear corners. Add to that a handle on top that bolts onto a cam underneath. We can see that in this position, the cam will overlap with the outside of the frame, but that will change when the cam is rotated to any other position. And here it is printed in PLA. In this example, we use the changing outer radius of the cam to provide a locking mechanism. Flipping the whole thing over, if we rotate the handle and the cam so the lobe is not overlapping, the door will open without any issues. However, if we rotate the lobe so it does overlap with the frame, it will be impossible to open the door. Optionally, we could modify this design so that the cam only had 90 degrees of travel and we had a spring or rubber band to return it to the locked position. That would turn it into a spring latch as we saw with the tripod. Now let's recreate the dial from the heater. From the top we can't see any cam mechanism or any mechanism at all, but once we rotate to view underneath we can see that we have the same type of cam as our other examples, 
but also that the housing has a series of notches that the cam will overlap with, but in between have clearance. Here is the printed version and it kind of works. It doesn't have the same type of satisfying snap to the predefined positions like in the heater's dial. When we look on the inside, we can see that the resistance does rise and fall, but the clearances aren't quite right and everything feels a little bit sloppy. Finding the correct clearance value for this mechanism proved very difficult. We have one clearance value for when the cam is in its resting position, but this second clearance value for knowing how much the lobe of the cam should overlap this notch in the housing proved much more difficult, at least with PLA. I printed a couple of different clearance variations, but I couldn't get it to feel right, so maybe the cam would be better suited being printed from TPU. Previously, I made a video on creating some outdoor automation for my goats, and this included a 3D printed feeder mechanism to drop them control amounts of food according to the schedule I set. My chosen design had these rotating buckets, but one variation I was considering at the time was based on a cam. And here is a proof of concept for that idea. We have a housing where we could pour food into any one of these cavities. In real life, you would probably optimize this. But then on the underside, we have a plate that has a version of a cam. Like our other examples, we have an inner and outer circle where the radius varies. In this case, effectively, the difference is 12 millimeters. But the difference here is the lobe doesn't extend outwards, but is instead a negative cut into this entire cam plate. This may not look like a cam, but it still follows the same working principles. And here is the printed version with me rotating the cam plate by hand. To demonstrate how it works, let's substitute goat pellets for M3 nuts. We can see that as long as the negative lobe does not intersect with these nuts, none of them will be able to fall through. If we attach a power drill to the narrowest part of the handle, we can demonstrate this mechanism at work. I'm using a drill because a dispenser like this works best at a set RPM with a controlled amount of rotations. Assuming I can hold the trigger consistently, we get quite a stable amount of material that falls through for each rotation, at least until the contents run out. And tuning the amount of material that's dispensed is simply a matter of changing the size of the opening in the cam plate, especially when paired with a stepper motor or here a geared DC motor where we know exactly how long each rotation will take. Let's finish off with one beautiful final application that uses variable load profiles to create animation. Let's quickly revisit our simplest cam that had a single smooth lobe. There's not really any reason why we can't have more complicated profiles. This first profile is the original one, but mirrored and merged together, giving it two symmetrical lobes. When installed in our frame, the end result is that the frequency of the linear motion will double, for each rotation, we now have two times that the bolt will travel up and down. So what about if we once again have two different lobes, but they're not symmetrical, they're instead offset. When installed in our frame, something quite different happens. We have two positions where the bolt will be at max height, but they're quite close together, and it doesn't quite return to minimum height in the middle. Let's graph our three profiles, and what we're showing here is how the bolt changes between its lowest position A and its maximum height B when the cam is pushing it up. And for our simplest example, the single lobe, the bolt will be at the base height most of the time and then spike up when the lobe interacts. Our symmetrical dual lobe does exactly the same thing, just twice as often, because there's two identical lobes per rotation. Our dual offset lobes gives quite a different pattern. The bolt rises to the top, dips a little and then rises to the top once more before returning to the lower position until the lobes come around once more. And with this simple adjustment, we can control the linear motion quite accurately, which leads us into our final model, which is this beautiful polar bear with seal automata by Amaya Chan. This model has two cams, so let's spot the characteristics. We have our base radius, which is the small part around the center hole, and then we have a series of angular lobes sprouting out from that. A polar bear and a seal are both animated, each has a cam assigned to them, and there are similarities in the movement because the cam profiles match, but there's also subtle variations in certain parts of the movement between the two cams. Here is the finished model, completely printed and assembled. And as we turn the dial, we can see that the polar bear's arm, as well as the seal, bob up and down until the polar bear takes a swipe and the seal ducks for cover. All of this animation is mechanically driven by the two cams, so let's have a closer look. 
if we manually move the polar bear's arm, we can see that this lever is connected and that will ride on one of the cams. And if we manually move the seal up and down, we can see that there's a little grey lever sticking out of the side and that will ride on the second cam. As we rotate the crank, we can see that the seal is riding up and down on the left hand cam and the lever for the polar bear's arm on the right hand cam. Each of them ride the profile of their cam, bobbing up and down until they reach the tip and then they fall back to the bottom completing the animation. Although the profile of the cams is a lot more advanced than what we demonstrated earlier, rotational motion is translated into linear motion thanks to the lobe of a cam, in this case pushing the bolt up and down, or in the case of the automata, pushing a seal and a polar bear arm up and down. The animation is fast and sharp because the profiles of the cam lobes are fast and sharp, but that does mean that we can't run this mechanism in reverse, or the notch will get stuck in the steep valley of the cam and jam everything up. If you're looking for something to print that both has character as well as a nice mechanism, then please choose this model and follow the links in the description. Let's recap our key principles. A cam should always have at least two circles, each with a different radius. We have our inner radius, which is considered the base, and then our outer radius, and the difference between these two can be quite important depending on the application. There's nothing to say that the lobe can't be reversed, with the majority of the cam having the outer radius, and then a small portion having the inner radius. There's also nothing to say that our lobes have to be symmetrical. Here we have three separate lobes on the same cam, two of them touch the outer radius, but the third one only comes about halfway out. And finally, there's nothing to say that the perimeter of our cam needs to be smooth. We can have jagged edges and use the shape of these profiles to dictate how the cam performs, whether it be converting rotation to linear motion, providing the geometry for a locking mechanism, a consistently controlled dispenser, or a kinetic work of art. And there we have it, the cam. A proven idea and versatile enough to power an internal combustion engine, lock a box, or even drive delicate animation. My example prints and all of the source CAD are linked below in case you'd like to print them. Let me know how you've used cams in the past or maybe how you might be intending to use them in the future. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy designing working 3D printed mechanisms. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.